Welcome to Portimao for the season finale of ELMS 2024. All four championships are still to be decided, but one thing that is not to be decided is the 2025 calendar, which has been released. We will be back to some European favorites, starting the season in Barcelona, followed by La Castellet and on to Imola. Then we'll visit the iconic spa and head back to Silverstone for the first time since 2019 before finishing the season once again in Portimao. But for now, let's focus up on the 2024 championship and the four hours of Portimao. <laughs> Welcome, Graham. How are you today? Great. Weather's not been that great at the moment, but it's <laughs> going to get better for the weekend. But boy, oh boy, have we got something in prospect here for another Portimao finale for the European Le Mans Series stuff. Oh, incredible. And let me tell you, there are 20 competitors capable of clinching the title this weekend. Let's start with LMGT3, where a record-breaking nine are able to clinch that title in the in the class for the very first time. Nine out of 11 mathematically able to do it. Realistically at the moment, we'll keep it to the top two because they're on equal points. Kessel Racing's Ferrari, double winners now after the last two race wins uh, against the Racing Spirit Le Mans, Aston Martin, equal points at 64. But if they stumble, you're right, there's a tight pack able to overhaul them and take the title. Another tight pack, LMP3 with the top three separated by just two points. Staggering, isn't it? You know, with so many opportunities to put clear blue uh, water between them, what we've got are those top three teams. We have the Euro International crew, we have Team Virage, we have RLRM Sport, all capable. A win for any of them, and the title's theirs. And LMP2 Pro Am currently sits at the top is AF Corsa. A, of course, uh, from the TDS for Richard Meal uh, effort. Those two teams used to winning a championship here. That's going to be fiercely fought. And there's going to be a lot of pressure on the bronze drivers. Rodrigo Celes in the TDS car. Francois Perodo, multiple title winner for A, of course. Uh, but again, other possibilities. Well, of course, they are the reigning champions. Uh, but moving on, last but not least, uh, LMP2. Three cars in the fight for that championship. Yep, it's AO by TF on a bit of a roll after a slow start to their season. Ahead of Inter Europol, who've been strong throughout, really reliable. Again, it's another. It's so tight, it's about who finishes ahead of the other. And we've got our new champions for 2024. Well, there you have it. It's all to play for this weekend. Now, let's see what the vibe is like in the paddock. <laughs> It's been a good year, uh, of course, uh, a tough one. We have to maximize our chances and, uh, of course, uh, keep in mind and, and react to what will happen. There are some very fast cars with very good drivers, so it's not only us, it's not only in the road pole. I think there is at least six, seven, eight cars which uh, can fight for, uh, for a podium. Because of the nature of the track, all the cars are very close together. So obviously all the cars test a lot here, so all the cars are very close. So for sure it will make the final race very interesting. I think our goal is quite clear, uh, we have nothing to lose, everything to gain. So I think we're going to go for the win and just do the best job uh, we can. It's better to have uh, some margin in being in front, but uh, if Inter Europol wins, we cannot do uh, anything. So uh, we have to focus on ourselves uh, and, and, and try to extract maximum from uh, from the car, from ourselves, from from the from the guys. The first two or three races, I think we we're not in the best spots. But then, after we really improved, we worked quite well on the car with the team, and now uh, now we are on for the championship. So cool. we are working really well, uh, and I think. Uh, yeah, we will all give our 100% to try to, to get this title. I think I'm not fully happy since we are not the one. <laughs> I always expect Portimao to be a, a spectacular race. I always love racing here. The GT um, traffic is, is quite intense. Uh, we take at some places a lot of risk to, to pass them and it's because the characteristic of the track being such a roller coaster ride, it's guaranteed for a nice show. Now, 
let's turn our attention to the Rookie of the Year, Gillian Onrion, who has risen through the ranks with Team Virage and is in the championship fight for LMP3. Next month, he will even take part in the Rookie Test for WEC. So let's discover a little bit more about him. I'm trying to do a bit of over sport. I am trying to do a bit of paddle or stuff like that. I, I love sport in general, so I am trying to find a bit uh, of, uh, of everything. Even if I am not good, uh, I'm trying to do all my best and, uh, and to win it. So yeah, you still have the mind of competition mind, you know. My dad is always with me. Uh, every time it can be at home or it can be in motorsport. Uh, he's a big support for me and uh, without him I would not be I would not be here so yeah. Et eh ben on prend le beau temps. Avant ah bon, ça doit continuer comme ça pour toute la semaine, toute la fin de semaine. Ça va bien droite. Eh oui. Ouais, c'est tout faire. Ah, j'espère. Hello. All good. Two years ago, if you told me I would be here in Portimao, I would, I would not believe it. So uh, I take every moment as a, as a special moment, to be honest. Uh, it's a privilege for me to be here. I was born uh, in, uh, in Nancy, uh, so in northeast of France, uh, and I am living in Toul, so a bit near of, uh, of Nancy. I was the type of, uh, of person who was kind, uh, always wanted to, to give everything to everyone. Uh, in school, uh, I was not the type of person who was listening a lot. C'était uh, un, un petit garçon espiègle en fait. Il était plus dans l'esprit le, dans uh, uh, un petit enfant modèle, mais qui était toujours prêt à faire des blagues. Uh, I think I was maybe four or five years old. Uh, I was with my dad watching Formula One. Since that moment, I always dream of driving a car. Uh, uh, we, we built uh, our family team. We, we have done a regional championship, a national championship that we won. We went to Niger Open Series, Le Mans Cup, and uh, now in uh, ELMS. When I am winning, I am happy for me, but I am happy also for him because I know all the sacrifices he, he has done for me. J'ai toujours rêvé d'avoir un fils. C'est la première des choses. Euh, et euh, il est au-delà de mes espérances. Il m'apporte tellement et il est tellement reconnaissant de ce que je peux lui apporter. have my mind also in, uh, in the rookie test of the week so I am preparing it also uh, at the same time but uh, this week fully focus on, uh, on Portimao. My biggest dream will be to, to drive in hypercar in week. Uh, that, that's for me the, 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 the goal. I am happy for me, but I am more happy for what I can give to my dad. He has done a lot of things for me and, and to thank him like that, for me it's, it's something. In my heart, it does some things.
time is fast approaching, but before they head into battle, there's a chance for the thousands of fans to see the drivers and the cars up close, collect some autographs, and take a chance to enjoy the atmosphere before the final round of the 2024 European Le Mans Series season. GT3 Sara Bovi claimed pole position for the Iron Dames with car number 85. In LMP3, it was Manuel Espirito Santo who put the 17 cool racing entry on pole position. Giorgio Roda claimed pole position in LMP2 Pro Am with the number 77 car from Proton Competition. While at the very front of the field, it is Panis Racing who have pole position for the season finale, courtesy of a lap from Charles Milesi. We are about to go racing in Portimao. Here's a view of Johnny Edgar, AO by TF, as Manuel Maldonado and closer to the camera, Lorenzo Flusa lead the field to the line. The four hours of Portimao is underway. Nice even start from the front row men. Manuel Maldonado moves over to the driver's left and right behind him, here comes Gabby Aubrey. His first race in two years. He's up from third to second for Nielsen. And it looks like everybody else getting safely through the first corner. Gabby Aubrey having a little look at the leader. Doesn't manage to get through. Up to third place, Cool Racing's number 37 machine. On board with Johnny Edgar, AO by TF. And Gabby Aubrey challenging Manuel Maldonado. Sweeps around the outside. What a move and trouble. Double trouble. Oliver Gray for Inter Europol. I think he was hit by Shalori Samani of AF Corsa. Yes, he is. The 51 car's in the gravel. Red and white. This is the battle for six. Johnny Edgar, AO by TF. Right behind, blue and black. Algarve Pros, Matthias Kaiser. Virtual safety car, virtual safety car. This to tidy up what happened at the hairpin. First time of asking to Oliver Gray from Inter Europol. Let's take a look as they come down the hill. The first yellow and green car into the hairpin gets turned around from behind, stuck in the middle of the road, the whole field coming through. And there's Charles Henri Samani who couldn't avoid him. In the pits, this is Matthew Richard Bell for Euro International and repairs for Oliver Gray. Not surprised. That'll be a new nose. Francois Perodo, AF Corsa, their LMP2 Pro Am car coming into the pit lane. Safety car deployed, safety car deployed, pit entry is closed. All cars to group up behind car 27. Car 27, keep the pace, please. Car 27, please keep the pace of around 80 kilometers an hour. All other cars do your best to group up behind the queue. 
Charlori Samani back in the air, of course, the garage chatting to teammate Manu Kala there on the right hand side. Back to green. Nielsen leading from Paris and Edex Sport. A little further back, battle for seventh. Algarve Pro's Matthias Kaiser under pressure from Inter Europol's remaining car, remaining healthy car. Sebastian Alvarez sends it down the inside at the hairpin and comes out on top. Kaiser has to take to the runoff area. He can't complete that pass there though. That is gaining a lasting advantage by being off track. He needed to concede that position. The stewards will take a look at it. Here comes Alvarez once more. Sends it over the top of the hill. This time, no room through for Kaiser. Or is there? Keeps it within the white lines and still hangs on. Great stuff. Vector Sport right behind this battle for seventh place. And Kaiser still hanging on to seventh. Alvarez right there in yellow and green. Three wide in LMP3, Francois Erio, the red car, yellow and green, Alexander Bukantsov, he's gonna take advantage, Erio outbreaks himself in the ultimate car. Bukantsov takes third for Inter Europol and Team Virage, the orange and yellow and gray on the inside, Julian Jerby couldn't get through. Johnny Larson dive bombing, Derek De Boer's racing spirit, Alamanasta Martin, there was contact there. Somebody's in the gravel. Hiroshi Hamaguchi in the green Iron Lynx Lamborghini. And that is a long way off. Let's take a look. Down the hill, inside Derek De Boer. Contact for both of them. Hamaguchi releases the brake pedal a little too early. And into the gravel. Come on, Derek, give it all. Nothing to lose now. Keep going, keep going. Johnny Larson now attacking Martin Berry. Grid Motorsport by TF Aston for second. He goes through. There was contact there as well. See a bit missing off the back of the Aston. Jacques Wolf and Julian Gerby. Wolf racing Sprint Le Mans down the inside of the Team Virage driver and got by. And we're on board now in ninth place with Julian Gerby. Challenge for the leader. Nico Pino from Edex Sport, the blue and gold car, takes the lead here in Portimao. He got ahead of Gabby Aubrey over the hill. Aubrey didn't see this one coming. He threw it up the inside and blocked the Frenchman on the exit. Nico Pino pulling away. There is Gabby Aubrey ahead of Manuel Maldonado. Cool racing in fourth right there as we go full course yellow. Checking temperatures. That's in the pit lane, by the way, not on the track. Just say that. Back to green flag racing. Battle for third place. Manuel Maldonado with the yellow highlights and the Paris car and behind Lorenzo Flusa, who started on the front row of the grid, don't forget, in second place. Got shuffled back to fourth at the start. But here comes the cool racing driver in traffic. Maldonado doesn't get by the Kessel Racing. Ferrari Flusa goes the long way round the outside. Kessel trying to move out of the way, unintentionally blocking Maldonado. Flusa got the best of that little break in traffic. He's up to third, but Maldonado is coming, sends it up the outside. But at the hairpin, that's the long way round. There's an LMP3 car in the way. Replay of the battle for 11th. Yellow and black is the Iron Lynx car of Jonas Reed. Niels Kulen around the outside for Duquesne. They go either side, Hiroshi Hamaguchi, Lamborghini. But Kulen on the dirt, losing traction. All oh, trouble, Matthias Kaiser from Algar Pro. And there's damage on the back of the car as well. What's happened there? There is the Duquesne car, so where's Jonas Reed? He's just ahead. In fact, he's trying to put a pass in on the Vector Sport car of Ryan Cullen. This is for ninth place. He was shown the grass by Cullen. He's still down the inside of the hairpin, gets his nose in front. Cullen cuts back immediately, though. He comes up the inside up the hill where it goes left over the brow. Ryan Cullen grabs back ninth place. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does around the outside. Big, brave stuff from both drivers there. 
Pacquiao cars here with the yellow highlights. Manuel Maldonado, Panis Racing in fourth. Philip Orgrand, United Auto Sports, red, white and blue. And right behind him, Johnny Edgar. And behind him is Sebastian Alvarez, the yellow and green. Look at Alvarez coming down the inside. Sends it late. Johnny Edgar cuts back now. Riding on board again with Edgar in the AO by TF car. Retakes the place. Drama for Derek De Boer in the Aston Martin on the right of your picture. Watch this into the braking area. The whole of the rear windscreen pops out in the slipstream. So racing Spirit Le down in 10th place. There is the Iron Dames machine, the leader in LMGT3. So Derek De Boer, after all their dramas, has gone a lap down to the leaders. Replay here, United Auto Sports in trouble. This is Daniel Schneider. Spinning up the hill towards turn 13. It's another full course yellow here in Portimao. And not even at the end of the first hour. That's to recover the bits of Aston off Derek De Boer's racing spirit of Le Mans car right in the pit exit road. Getting ready to go back to green. There's the Nielsen car and Cool Racing. That's the battle for second. The blue and black Algarve Pro car, not the race leader, but this is the battle for second place. Gabby Aubrey hanging on. Here's 65. This is the Panis car of Manuel Maldonado. And he has lost ground again. And here's how it happened. Oh dear, Philip Ulgran up the inside into 13. Maldonado coming to a halt. And here's the battle, AO by TF. And Sebastian Alvarez from Inter Europol on the inside of the red and white AO car. Johnny Edgar gets through there. So that's a change for fifth place now. Number 12, this is... Torsten Kratz, WTM by Rinaldi, die bombed by Georgios Kolovos from Team Virage. Kolovos gets through. Here's our race leader, Nico Pino for Edex Sport. Four and a half seconds, nearly five seconds now ahead of Nilsson with United in third. Really under pressure from Inter Europol. Battle for position here as well. Giorgio Roda in the grey car behind the blue and black of Algarve Pro. 77 car started on pole in LMP2 Pro-Am now down to fifth place and the Algarve Pro car goes by him as they both go by the LMP3 into Europol car. So on board with Giorgio Roda, fifth in LMP2 Pro-Am with Nielsen leading that category with car number 24. Second stop for LMP2 Pro-Am, reigning champion Francois Perodo for AF Corsa and there's Tobrel, that's the race leader, Nico Pino in the gravel got caught up with the GR Racing Ferrari in LMG T3. I think that was Mike Wainwright starting that car. And the problem for Pino is he spun backwards into the gravel. The car has come to a halt. It looks like he is stranded there. LMG T3 leaders in the pits, the Iron Dames Porsche. This is Sarah Bovey staying in to complete her minimum drive time. Grey cars, Cool Racing, Sorenzo Flusa in third, ahead of two Inter Europol competition machines. We are going virtual safety car at 15.37.30. At 15.37.30, we're going virtual safety car. Great on board view from Oliver Gray as his teammate Sebastian Alvarez dive bombs Renzo Flusa. Flusa runs out wide, Alvarez goes through and now Oliver Gray in the second into Europol car. 20 seconds to virtual safety car. Recovering after that clash on lap one at the hairpin. That meant an enforced longer stop for a new nose. We are under virtual safety car. They both got by before it went virtual safety car and now the pit lane is a hive of activity. Renny Binder taking over from Giorgio Roda at Proton Competition. Nico Pino back in the pits there, two laps down. United Autosport lead them away from Nielsen and Cool and Ea by TF and a change for fifth place behind. Vladislav Lomko goes by, Clement Novelak, the two into Europol cars. Robert Kubica hip hops the curbs. And around the outside of Benjamin Pedersen in the Nielsen racing entry. 
This is looking for third place. Can't quite get there, but look at the Panis car coming up from behind. Fantastic stuff from Artur Leclerc. He goes by both of them down into the hairpin. Kubica also goes by Peterson. Panis goes by both of them. So that's a great pass from Artur Leclerc. Shows Robert Kubica the curbs. Kubica keeps his foot in. Still coming, the pole on the inside now for AO by TF. But again, Artur Leclerc brave around the outside. So he takes third from Kubica right behind. Behind Benjamin Peterson under pressure from Clement Novelak and Fabio Scherer, the 23 United Autosports car, getting in there as well. Novelak doesn't get by Peterson. The Nielsen driver scrambles through. And look at Scherer trying to get on the inside up into turn 13. Doors closed, comes around the outside. And now again. Vladislav Lomko attacking Clement Novelak to try and retake the place that he lost at the restart. He goes back past his teammate, but that's only for seventh. United's Fabio Scherer ahead of both of them. Big lockup. It is drama everywhere you look. Replay here, watch the Ferrari of Scott Noble, JMW Motorsport car losing it between 12 and 13, and the Iron Dames Porsche having to take to the runoff area to escape the drama. Replay of Torsten Kratz on the inside of Alexander Matchell taking third place in LMP3. At the hairpin, Benjamin Peterson for Nielsen. Behind him, JB Simonar, the rally cross driver, and the Duquesne car with the green highlights could take advantage here. Benjamin Peterson, the American driver, watching the mirrors perhaps a little too much. JB Simonar. Ice racer in the winter, rally cross driver and Porsche driver in the summer, as well as racing in LMP2 here in the European Le Mans series. Is there nothing he can't drive? Simonar on the inside, he's going through here, isn't he? Peterson's fighting it hard, but it is going to happen. And through he goes. There's Gilles Duquesne. Oh, and contact in traffic. Francois Herio, the ultimate car, turned around. JB Simonauer and Frederick Vesti from Algarve Pro with the other Algarve Pro car with more blue on it. That's Alex Lynn right behind. So three-way battle for seventh. Alex Lynn with a head of steam. He's going to go by his teammate. No, he's not. His teammate goes by the Duquesne car in traffic. So good pass for Fred Vesti. He goes by JB Simonauer and Alex Lynn coming up on the inside of Simonauer out of the hairpin. They catch the Aston Martin, Alex Lynn around the outside, had an epic race to finish the season here last year for Algarve Pro, doesn't quite get through there this time. More trouble for GR, this time it's Davide Regon in the Ferrari, James Dason to RLR M Sport LMP3 car gets turned around his nose. And in traffic, Andy Merrick for United Autosports and Alexander Matchell in the P3 car from DKR. As United car went through, Marshall just couldn't get it round the corner. Johnny Larson handing over to Conrad Larson, the Formula Racing Ferrari in the pits. And this was the change for third. Vladislav Lomko going by Fabio Scherer. Battle the third in LMGT3 Islands. Matt Griffin in the green and white spirit of race. Ferrari holding off multiple Le Mans class winner Johnny Adam in the grid motorsport by TF Aston. Julian Jerby for Team Virage all over. Matthew Richard Bell, this is the lead battle in LMP3. Team Virage having a strong season last year and again this, but Euro International have been very quick this season, not always very lucky. But nobody really has been very lucky this season in any of our classes. All the races have been pretty tough. The competition is intense. In a race who borrowed from Albert Costa, this is Gabby Aubrey ready to take the wheel again at Nielsen. Of course, he led the race early on in this car. Our current race leader, though, for cool is Ritomo Miata. Good job, Ritomo. We still have the same gap to Kubica. Seven seconds. Good job. Great job by Ritomo Miata, keeping the gap constant ahead of Robert Kubica in second. Changed the lead in LMP3, just happened. Julian Jerby for Team Virage, the yellow and grey car ahead of Matthew Richard Bell for Euro International. Riding on board with teenager Esteban Masson, the Kessel Racing Car Guys Ferrari, if it stays where it is, will have just enough 
to take the championship by two points from the current race leaders, the Iron Dames. Sarah Bovey's done all she can, keeping the Iron Dames in the lead. Now hands over to Rahal Frey. All they can do is stay in front and hope that fate treats them a little better. Trouble for Kessel Racing. Drive through penalty for causing a collision. And that is really going to hamper the Kessel Racing Ferrari. Vladislav Lonko, Clement Novak still battling for third for Inter Europol. It's been a good weekend for the team so far. There have been some fantastic battles, and here is another one. Artur Leclerc for Panis Racing going by. Frederick Vesti of Cool for fifth and then losing it on the exit of turn one. After their pit stops, the Iron Dames down in fifth position. Rahul Frey ahead of Matteo Cressoni in the Proton Porsche. It's been such a tough year in terms of bad luck for the Iron Dames. They've had pace everywhere. They've had little luck at all. They've known heartbreak and success here in Portimao in equal measure. What will happen to the Iron Dames and Iron Lynx? There's Claudio Schiavone, the team boss. And the Le Mans Cup champion with Cool Racing, Adrian Keeler. Ice cream's all round at Cool Racing. Pit stop for Spirit of Race. Matt Griffin handing over to South Africa's David Perel. Battle for third in LMP3, Manuel Espirito Santo. 17 Cool Racing car goes by Bernardo Pinheiro of Portugal. That's the Team Virage car. We're on board with the number eight machine. Artur Leclerc out. Charles Milesi in at Panis Racing. The man who claimed pole position. Into Europol's Clement Novelak has got a problem with the right hand door. It's not closing. The team trying to make sure it stays closed. Trouble for Derek De Boer as well. Bits falling off the Aston. It must be the end of term. Lost the rear window. Now the door mirror is coming off. Alessio Rivera handing over to Mathieu Vaxivier at AF Corsa. This is the 83 Pro-Am car. Iron Dames leading from Iron Lynx. And Matteo Crisoni in sixth place with Ricardo Perra from GR Racing all over him. Ferrari's looking strong here. Trying to go around the outside, the GR car. Love the way they've got orange sidewalls on the black tyres to match the rest of the livery. Nice touch of class. He goes by for sixth position. Pro-Am battle for fourth. Mathieu Vaxivier for AF Corsa under real pressure from Matthias Besch, the Richard Meal by TDS car. And this is all about championship positions now. Matthias Besch sends it around the outside. Vaxivier breaks even later. They both run off road. Matthias Besch once more attacking Mathieu Vaxivier. Goes the long way around the outside. Up the hill to 13. That can't work, can it? Not quite. He got the RLR M Sport LMP3 car in the way. Around the outside, is he going to box him in? He is. Great work by Matthias Besch. He saw the opportunity. There's contact with Vax in the air. Besch has to force his way through past the traffic. Good job, buddy. Good job. Racing Spirit of Le Mans. Antoine Ducat in trouble here in their LMP3 car. Broken suspension. It looks like he's pulling off. And that is Ollie Jarvis for United Autosports, car number 21, off in the gravel. We will go virtual safety car. Just before the virtual safety car, look on the left-hand side, Charles Milesi just squeezing by Ferdy Habsburg for fifth place. So what happened to Ollie Jarvis? Contact in the final corner with Valentin Asaclo in the racing spirit of Le Mans, Aston Martin, and buried deep in the gravel. On the inside of the Aston, the gap just closed. After the virtual safety car has given everybody the chance to pit, we will go to full safety car with less than an hour to go. There's Bernardo Pinheiro. Julian Jerby with his back to us. 
Bernardo's dad, Paolo, was the founder and the CEO of the Portimao circuit, and he passed away last July. Back to green. Look at the battle for third. It's into Europol. Tom Dillman down the inside, and Luca Giotto grabs third. On board with Giotto in the 34 car, back down to fourth. Right behind, look at the Paris Racing car, slinging it up the inside of 30 Habsburg. Charles Milesi retakes that fifth position. Down towards the hairpin, I'm not coming. Oh, yes I am! Down the inside of Luca Giotto, through the dummy and then the late pass and takes the position away. He's up two from the restart. But Luca Giotto coming back at him side by side. There's contact. They both hold on somehow and contact again. And Luca Giotto back in front of the Panis car of Shah Milesi. That will not please Milesi one bit. Doesn't want Habsburg latching onto his tail. Take a look here at the contact, just the tiniest of touches. Great reflex save by Charles and Giotto didn't have it easy on board either. Phenomenal close racing here. 40 minutes to go. Contact here. Matthias Pesch and Mathieu Vaxivier. Vaxivier getting shown the grass. Full course yellow. Back to green once more. Cool Racing leading from AO by TF into Europol third and fourth. Cool Racing in fifth, looking to make a challenge. And then United Autosports in sixth position. Trouble for Charmelacy. Panis Racing car getting shuffled aside. What has happened to Malacy? Well, as they got going with the restart, it looks like his speed limiter did not release. Chamalesi under pressure now from Vector Sport from behind. And this is Filipe Drugovic. He looks down the inside. The Brazilian goes through. Good effort from Drugovic in car number 10. Malesi trying to counter-attack up the hill to turn 13. Looking to go the long way round the outside. Inside is a very long way round, though. Still attacking and contact with Drugovic. Drugovic gets turned around. United Autosport hit by DKR. And Vector losing the tail of the car. Corrin Larsen battling with Julian Andlauer. Formula Racing Ferrari showing the Proton Competition Porsche the curbs. This is for fourth place in LMGT3. Insane battles everywhere. This is Guillaume Orion from Team Virage with Oscar Tunio, WTM by Rinaldi Racing right behind him. This is for third in LMP3 and will affect the outcome of the title battle. Guillaume Orion, of course, trying to win that championship, but down now to fourth place. Half an hour to go. Andrea Caldarelli for Iron Lynx chasing Michelle Gatting. The Iron Dames are in front. Oh, and getting held up. There was contact there, I think, with the Team Virage car. And here comes the Iron Lynx Lamborghini. Battle for third in LMP3. Oscar Tunio, WTM by Rinaldi Racing, trying to go around the outside of Adam Ali in car number 11 for Euro International. That does not work there as they go into full course yellow. Oscar Tunio had tried before. This was turn one down the inside of Adam Ali. Outbraked himself. Ali on the cutback, retaking second spot. And Tunio then up the inside from turn two into turn three. Couldn't quite find the traction. Look at the black marks he leaves on the road. Ready to restart. Red white A by TF, green and yellow into your pole. That's second and third. Look at the Edex Sport car restart. Still pushing hard, but two laps down in export after their early dramas. Amongst the LMGT3 cars, the battle for third place in LMP2 Pro-Am. You can see there the black and white of Mathieu Vaxivier chasing Matthias Besch. And right in front, Alex Quinn, car number 20 for Algarve Pro. They've gone by the Iron Lynx Lambo, now the Iron Dames Porsche. There's only two sides to the Porsche. There were three cars, and there is Alex Quinn getting his elbows out. Matthias Besch with the bright yellow highlights for Richard Mille by TDS trying to go around the outside. Oh, and there's trouble up at 13. Guillaume Orion, Team Virage. 
The point situation in LMP2 Pro-Am is insane. Richard Mille by TDS with the bright yellow highlights, tied for the lead with the car right behind, AF Corsa with the chrome black and white. And then Proton Competition, one point further back, and Algar Pro, the car in front of this battle, just two points further back. Richard Mille by TDS with AF Corsa, tied as they are on points right now. There's Francois Perodo watching from the AF Corsa garage. What about the Iron Dames? Two points behind Kessel Racing at the moment, with Iron Lynx third in the standings. And the Iron Dames are leading the race. They can do no more. Kessel back up to fifth. That's all they need. This is the Kessel car, guys, Ferrari. They're in the perfect position to snatch victory in the championship by two slender points. A quarter of an hour to go. Insanely tense for those in the garage. In the car, just get it home. And still race battles to be fought. Gail Julian for RLR M Sport. And Oscar Tunio in the WTM by Rinaldi racing car. The RLR M Sport machine has third. Mathieu Vaxivier inside Matthias Besch for fourth place. AF Corsa now with one hand on the title. Inside the final 10 minutes, LMP3, Gail Julian, RLIM Sport ahead of Adam Ali. That's the change for second. Mathieu Vaxivier, replay here. And that is Alex Quinn, Algar Pro, slowing, getting it all wrong at the hairpin. Out of the pit lane, final splash and dash for AO by TF. Louis Delatras rejoining ahead of Tom Dillman for into Europol. Race leader Malte Jakobsen for Cool Racing is in. So too Mathieu Vaxivier. So too Ben Viscal for Proton Competition. And Matthias Besch from Richard Mille by TDS. Four minutes to go, headlights flashing. Malte Jakobsen for Cool Racing going by. Alex Quinn for Algar Pro. And a drive through for car 29, that's Matthias Besch. Abuse of track limits for the Richard Mill by TDS driver, James Allen Duquesne in the pits from the lead. Lorenzo Flusa and Vittorio Miata there in the cool racing garage. That hands them the advantage. In GT3, Kessel Racing lead the points from this team, the Iron Dames. Iron Dames have got maximum points at the moment. They can't win the title from here, but the car behind the Iron Leaks Lamborghini could, if they won the race, take the title. There's Malte Jakobsen. This is the last lap of the race. The leader is behind them. They have to do it now. Michel Gatting has got to let Andrea Caldarelli through in that green Lamborghini before the leader gets to them. Marty Jakobsen is right there, does not need to pass the two GT3 cars, but might do anyway to keep his speed up. And it's happening. The Iron Dames pull to one side. They surrender victory for the championship title to go to 63. Disappointment for Takeshi Kimura and the Car Guys team. Marty Jakobsen does pass them. He wins the race for Cool. And that means that the 63 Lamborghini takes the LMGT3 title. Wow, cool racing win it. Lorenzo Flusa, Ritomo Miata, and Malta Jakobsen. Victory in Portimao. A crazy finish to a crazy race to end a crazy season. Cool racing winners in LMP2. Proton competition coming out on top on the last lap in LMP2 Pro-Am. In LMP3, victory also going to Cool Racing, the number 17 car ahead of RLR M Sport and Euro International. And the Iron Lynx Lamborghini ahead of the Iron Dames and the Proton Porsche in third. And again, it all came down to the last seconds of the last lap in Portimao. So let us salute our champions. In LMP2, it is AO by TF, with Johnny Edgar, Louis Delatraz and Robert Kubica taking the crown. Well, it's a nice feeling. It has been a, a tough year. Uh, very, very tight battles and uh, yeah, to come here uh, still managed a good race, although all, all weekend we were not so competitive. 
I think it's a big achievement for all the team, for my teammates, and uh, yeah, uh, it has been a big battle, so it's making it a nice feeling, and uh, it's, it's never easy to win championship, so we are happy. Cool Racing's 37 car takes the win from AO by TF and the 47 from Cool Racing completing the podium. AO by TF, the champions from Inter Europol, car number 43, and the 37 from Cool Racing finishing third. This pass on the final lap, Proton competition going by Algarve Pro changed the balance of the LMP2 Pro-Am title. At that stage, the 20 car was taking the title, but in the end, it went to 83 from AF Corsa for one position at the end. Proton winning the race with Giorgio Rodo, René Binder and Bent Viscal. But the title going to the 83 AF Corsa car Francois Perodo, Maggio Vassivier, and Alessio Rivera do it again. Perodo, the serial champion. No time for I, it's been such a such a tough fight between Mathieu and Matthias. It was uh, it was unbelievable. And then uh, and then APR was in front. We really thought that they would have to fuel, but they managed to do four laps more than everybody else, which is unbelievable. But uh, I think we needed one car to overtake them to win by literally one or two points and uh, it happened in the last corner so this one is uh, this one will be for the books the last lap pass to decide the win for proton competition and to snatch the title away from algarve pro nielsen finishing in third place rounding out another strong season in lmp2 pro-am just three points separated the top three a of corsa algarve pro and proton competition Pitching LMP3 went to the number 17 from Cool Racing that also started on pole. Miguel Cristobal and Manuel Espirito Santo. But second place was enough for RR M Sport. They take the LMP3 trophy. Michael Jensen, Nick Adcock, and Gail Julian. But this is where the story ends. This is where the story ends. I'm lost for words, really. I'm just so happy to win the championship this year. Going into the race, we knew it would be a tough fight, obviously, with such, such a little gap in it. But, you know, we fought really hard. The race was not given to us. It was really hard, but we fought for it like lions. And in the end, it, we won. So really happy with that. Cool Racing got the win they wanted. RLR M Sport claimed the title and Euro International's number 11 crew completed the podium. And that second, third placing was absolutely crucial in the championship battle because RLR M Sport with second place by one single point took the trophy from Euro International. The Team Virage, car number eight, finishing in third in the season standings. And another insane last lap pass handed not just LMG 3 victory, but the championship title as well to the crew of the 63 Iron Lynx Lamborghini. Crushed hopes for Kessel Racing car guys and for the Iron Dames. But Hiroshi Hamaguchi, Axel Jeffries and Andrea Caldarelli are the champions for Lamborghini and Iron Lynx. And that probably sums up the Iron Dame season better than anything else. I think today really we have to thank the team because the car was uh, really good. It was uh, uh, just being patient. We were uh, super good. Uh, we didn't have a very good start of the race, uh, but we came back. So thanks to the guys at the pit stop. Thanks to these two amazing teammates for the whole season. Uh, yeah, late move, but uh, at the end we, we are here. 
The Iron Dames sacrificed a win so their teammates could take the title. Iron Leafs claiming victory. Iron Dames in second and Proton Porsche finishing in third in Portimao. And the title by two points to the Iron Lynx Lamborghini crew from Kessel Racing with Racing Spirit Le Mans in third as the Iron Dames sacrifice their position for their teammates. Whoever writes this stuff is not getting paid enough. Another astonishing finale to a fabulous season of European Le Mans Series racing. As ever, after the racing, a chance for the teams, the drivers and their families to come together and celebrate their success and perhaps drown their sorrows. The end of season gala is always eagerly anticipated and thoroughly deserved. Congratulations to all of our championship winners, to all the teams, competitors and officials who've made it such a thrilling season. Thanks for the memories and we'll see you again in 2025.